We're a couple of meeple, and we're going to tell you about the two-player card game of hidden identities and bluffing called Vampire Empire from Stronghold Games. So Vampire Empire is a uh, two-player card game, uh, and that fits the channel really well. It's a game, like you said, of hidden identities and bluffing, kind of similar to Netrunner in some respects and mechanics, in that it's a little bit asymmetric, and uh, it has uh, some guessing involved for both players. Um, the basic gist of it is uh, one player is playing the humans, and one player is playing the vampires in this sort of medieval village and castle. And you have a deck of nine characters that are going to be in the center of the board between both players. Three of those characters are going to be face up at any one time, and each player, based on which side they're playing, is going to control their own deck of cards. At the beginning of the game, the vampire player will select three uh, tokens from a bag or whatever you have on hand, and they'll see the identities of three of the people. So they'll already know, the vampire person knows of the nine people in the castle, which three are vampires and which are human. After the vampire player picks the three vampires, the human player is then going to select two more characters from the bag, and they'll know for sure two of the two of the characters in the castle that will, will for sure be human. Right, and so uh, this sort of hidden knowledge that each player has uh, will drive the game. Um, on your turn, you will be able to play cards to try and find out the identity of one of the characters who's face up in front of you. There will always be three face up characters. Uh, the vampire player can um, use his cards to hide one of those characters without revealing what, if it's a vampire or a human, back into the character deck. And the human player on their turn can use the cards, their holy water cards, to uh, ask about the identity of one of those face up characters. And then the vampire player has to tell the truth whether it is a human or a vampire, and that may inform some of the strategy that the human player is going to use. There are not a ton of there are not a ton of holy water cards in the human player's deck, so uh, you have to deploy that ability at the right time. I would say. So, if you're the human player, obviously your objective is to rid the castle of vampires. Each character is going to fall into one of three different factions. There's the clergy, there's noblemen, and there are servants. So the way that you attack in the game is actually based on uh, the deck of cards. You'll have certain colors that are associated with each of those, I guess, factions. Um, and then if you have the appropriate, um, let's say you want to attack like with a cook, for example, um, then you would need a green colored card or a green colored attack card to attack someone else in the castle. Yeah, so you're always making one character attack another character in the castle. It sort of simulates, you know, people know there are vampires out there, but they don't know who, and so these nine people who live in this castle are sort of like paranoid and frantically trying to like kill who they think may be a vampire. Um, so they're going to use, like you said, an attack card of the appropriate color that they belong to. The defending player then has a chance to block their attack with a card that matches the color of the character being attacked. And you have two combat rounds per turn that you can attack and block. If the attack, uh, the numerical value of the attack beats the blocker, then the character who is defending dies. And at that time, the vampire player reveals whether or not that character was a human or a vampire player. The ultimate goal, like you said, for the human player is to wipe out all the vampires. Alternatively, the vampire player can win if they have th all three of their vampires revealed in the center of the table. And that's one thing we haven't talked about yet, and that's each character card is double-sided. There's a vampire side and there is a normal human side. So when you reveal the identity of a character, they become face up, and that actually changes what the vampire player is able to do. They always have to attack with their vampire, and the human player always has to attack an exposed vampire if they're on the table. But again, if the vampire player ever has three of his vampires face up in the center, that means he wins, he controls the castle, he has brought terror and darkness to the people of this small town. So I think in all the games we've played, I don't know that it's ever come down to all revealed vampires or... Um, it's come close. It's come pretty close. Um, I've had two of three once, and I and then there was a third one in the deck, and it was really thin, and it was, it was a close thing, but yeah. Yeah, I think I... Uh, either he did a bat form or something, or... He hid. Did, yeah. yeah, he hid someone. I think a human player ran away into this, like, a secret door in the cellar or something. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But, 
Uh, but one another, another way that uh, you can win is just going to final scoring, so last man standing kind of thing. Like, if there are more humans dead than vampires, then the vampire player wins. Most likely. Set. For a live vamp, if the game ends uh, and goes to final scoring because one of the instant win conditions are not met, then the human player will win. Uh, the human player will score one point for each human that's left alive, and the vampire player will score two points for each vampire that's left alive. So you've got a bit of a war of attrition going on um, in terms of who can keep their side alive uh, as much as possible. Okay. Um, there's definitely some different strategies involved when playing vampire versus human. Um, for the human player, since you only know a couple of the characters that are for sure human, uh, you have to do a little bit of guesswork. Um, maybe the vampire player is using the nun to attack a lot of people. Um, well, you would think that the vampire player wouldn't want to attack his fellow vampires, right? And so maybe you assume the people he's attacking are human. So you'd want to feel more naturally inclined to, um, you feel naturally inclined to protect them. Right, uh, but that's part of the vampire player's tricks and that he's trying to get the human player to think that one characters are one thing when they may not be necessarily they may they may be something else entirely. Uh, it's a risky strategy because if the human player doesn't have a hand of cards that can defend, and you're attacking one of your own vampires, then you've obviously killed one of your vampires by accident. Um, so it's this nice little uh, tug of war over the 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 power balance in the middle of the table, uh, and and both players you know, aren't quite sure what the other player knows necessarily. So um, it's always fun when the human player goes around, like, stabbing in the dark and just trying to kill whoever they can without really... <laughs> under stabbing in the dark. Without, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> without understanding who exactly they're going after because the vampire player can kind of, like, ride that out, you know? Uh, what's also pretty great about the combat, I meant to mention this earlier, um, was is that the weapons are fit for each faction. So, like, the clergy can beat other characters with like a holy bible yeah or like or a cross or, or a, a medallion yeah. yeah and the noble people have weapons like rifles and knives and, and, and yeah. stuff and then i think the um servants the servants has like a hunting knife which is pretty great so it's and like, a pitchfork yeah but i kind of i kind of love uh killing a vampire with a, a holy like a cross or a holy bible very thematic it's pretty great um, so yeah, so I mean the game has a lot of interesting mechanics in that way, um, and there's a couple that we didn't touch on, things that I really like about this game. There's this really cool double discard pile mechanic where at the, in this game, at the beginning of your turn, you, is when you discard cards. So you can discard to one of two discard piles, either your moat, which is your permanent out of the game forever discard pile, or your cellar, which is sort of um, a holding area for cards that you think you may use later. And you do this at the beginning of your turn, and then you draw back up to your hand size. Once your deck runs out, you get to reshuffle any cards that you've discarded to your cellar through the course of the game up to that point, and um, then draw from that, and that becomes your, your second draw pile, basically. Um, so that's a really interesting mechanic. I've never played a card game where you discard cards at the beginning of your turn. I think that's interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool way. It's an interesting mechanic just in that you are planning ahead for future turns. Um, say, in the very beginning, there aren't any noble characters in, out front, and you have a handful of just purple cards, like of attack and defense, right? Um, they're kind of useless, right? And those characters are lower in the stack maybe, so it might be better to set those aside. Yeah. The other thing that's cool is that uh, there are support cards, which are sort of like um, special cards that are unique to each side. So the human deck has a certain uh, support cards and the vampire player has certain support cards. And uh, based on whose turn you play them on, because they can be used out of turn, played as like an interrupt or during combat, um, Depending on whose turn you play them on, uh, they cost a, a different amount. So for the human player, their cards are always cheaper on their own turn, um, and the vampire player the same way. But if you play them on the opponent's turn, they cost more. And to play these cards, you actually have to discard cards out of your hand similar to something like Race for the Galaxy or San Juan. So it introduces an interesting ele um, hand management element into the game when you want to use some of your faction-specific cards uh, that can give you a leg up. Uh, and some of these abilities are really cool. I mean, the vampires can turn into bats or turn into smoke, or the humans can um, find medicinal herbs to save a dead character <laughs> or a secret passage that allows them to escape out of the clutches of a vampire who's coming to kill them. Um, so it's it uh, it diversifies the gameplay a little bit and and the strategic deployment of those cards is really important to winning. The art on the cards is actually pretty interesting. Um, it, there's kind of like this gothic, stenciled, maybe stained glass kind of style to it, um, which I, I mean goes with the whole like vampire feel for sure. But I don't really like it all that much. It just doesn't appeal to you, or I don't know. It seems like a little 
I think it could be brighter. I don't know, but then maybe it wouldn't make for a vampire game. It's just not for me. I actually really like the art. Um, it's very Baroque. It does remind me of stained glass. It's like it's sort of like this Gothic Baroque kind of look where everything is very um, the, the color tones are all very flat. Um, and it gives a nice contrast, I think, to a lot of the imagery, um, especially on the characters. And, and what I really love on the characters is, you know, they are double-sided. So their vampire side and their, and their regular normal human side are identical in terms of the pose and outline of the, the shape of their body. But there are just slight subtle differences between the um, way that the uh, art is presented vampire or, or human. So like, for example, the, the lady, she's holding a glass of wine on her human side. And when you flip it over, you know, it changes the color green to the color red, but it also makes her glass of wine a glass of blood, which mm -hmm. I think is a really nice touch. Right. I think it's something similar for the cook. Um, he's holding a rabbit, a bloody rabbit. He's holding a bloody rabbit. And then I think on the other side, it's a heart or something. It looks pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so I, I like the art, actually. I think it adds a lot of flavor to this game, and, and it does something that I really appreciate, which is um, it brings vampires back to their sort of, like, force of darkness, evil, um, nefarious roots. I feel like vampires as a theme has gotten way too, like, transgendered and sparkly uh, okay, for my, for, right, for right, my right, liking. Right. So um, vampires uh, as a force of evil, that's what I'm talking about. All right, yeah, all right, fair enough. But I mean, it doesn't have to be sparkly. So overall, uh, I would say as a two-player game, uh, this game is fantastic. It plays in about 30 minutes. Uh, it's real simple to learn and pick up and play, but it does have a lot of depth to it in terms of, uh, especially if you have an opponent that you play a lot with who you sort of play off each other and know um, how each of those players, or and know how your opponent uh, reacts to your bluffing or to your, what, your strategy, uh, per se. Um, so I think it's great in that way, and you know, it's a card game, so it's really portable, um, and I think I really like it a lot. I was actually very pleasantly surprised uh, with this game, and, and we've played it quite a bit. Yeah, I, I really like all the stories that come out of it, like I always do. Um, just the fact that you can be so close to ridding the entire castle of vampires, and then, like, poof, he turns into bat form. It's like, and disappears back into the No, world. this isn't fair. <laughs> um, or if, you know, on my, like, final turn, like, playing as the vampire, I, like, use a holy bible against, like, a nun who was, like, you know, the last last one standing. Um, I think it would be pretty fun. But the other thing that I like is just what, no matter what side you play, there are plenty of there's plenty of opportunity. I think it's well balanced is what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't, I don't really find myself leaning towards one side or the other that I prefer to play. Um, I just really like both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's quick. It's quick playing too. Turns are really fast. You know, you never feel like you're not participating. So there's definitely a lot of thinking going on and there's like a whole meta game, which I think you've said previously in other videos that you appreciate is that there's there's the game on the table. There are the cards that are there and the cards we're playing, but then there's the whole mind game in between. Uh, which can be pretty fun. <laughs> uh, my only negative for this game is that it comes in a tin. <laughs> Um, and I'm not necessarily... It's not satisfying hearing that tin open? No, no, I, listen, I'm not opposed to tins, per se. I actually... <laughs> I, I'm not like some people um, on YouTube who review board games who are just like absolutely like hate tins. I actually think tins are cool, and I like the cover art in this game. It's like this embossed metal with like a vampire and a human kind of like face-to-face. -face. Um, but wh what I don't like about uh, the tin is it's a card game, and it's really like not very many cards, and not very many pieces in general in the game. Uh, but everything fits into the insert, so like if you want to take the game with you, you have to take the tin with you, and it just kind of is like, well, you could have put this into a much smaller box. Like there's a lot of wasted space in that tin. It takes up space on your shelf. Takes up space when you're carrying it over to someone's house or whatever. So that's true, and it is a really quick game, so it could be fun to take if you're like traveling and yeah. like play a game on the plane or something. Exactly, and having this tin that you don't know what to do with or you don't have <laughs> space with is like it's kind of annoying. Um, so if there's ever like a second edition, I would love to see this game come in like a tuck box or a, or even just a smaller tin, like a half size tin would would go a long way into making it way more portable. But other than that, that shouldn't dissuade you from playing the game. It's a it's a really fun game. Um, especially for two players, so I'm going to give it two fangs up. Two fangs up? Wouldn't you want two fangs down? Wouldn't that be better? Uh, two fangs in the neck. <laughs> two fangs in the neck. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, I almost said two glittery fangs in the neck, but <laughs> he's shaking his head at me. So uh, I agree with your assessment. I absolutely love this game. Highly recommended. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Yeah, thanks, and leave a comment 
Um, let us know. Hold let on. us know what your thoughts on vampires are, because you've heard mine. Yeah. Well, I don't like glitter either, but I'm just not so open about it. 